everyone to the We Are Libertarians Daily Podcast. I am Hody Johns. I am joined, you probably guessed it, by my buddy, Dale Melchin. Dale, how's it going, man? Going going tremendous. Just oh. got done just got done with a mad workout. Sent my punch selfies to everybody. <laughs> my post workout punch selfies. And uh <laughs> yeah. Doing pretty good. How are you? Uh, doing great, man. Doing great. Uh, excited to, to talk about this subject with you. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of fasting is I think of that religious, like, giving up food. And that's part of it, from what I understand. But yes. you also tell me, the guru that you hate that you are, but you are, you Not tell me there's more to it. So what, so what more is there to fasting, Dale? I'm a sojourner. Well, in this particular case, I'm I'm undertaking something called the ungaming. Now, I've already offended all of my gaming friends by telling them about this because last week I realized how much time I waste playing video games. And so I went through Steam and, and systematically deleted all of my games. I did not remove Steam from my uh <laughs> I did not remove Steam from my computer yet, but I decided for my own betterment to get control of my time, even though I haven't really replaced it with anything yet. I'm just gonna Stop playing video games. Stop wasting time. And it's been it's been great. Been That's some been glorious great. boredom going on. So let's talk about then like what the because that just sounds like quitting video games, which is no different than quitting smoking. So I guess to, well, to talk about fasting, fasting well, is I, I, that kind of that's kind of how I view video games right now, Hody Johns. All right. Well, maybe it's your cigarettes, but uh, <laughs> I, I could. The thing about video games, I actually have given them up entirely before. Um, there's a great quote, which I'm going to look up next time. It's your turn to talk uh, mm. because it's just a fantastic quote. But it says uh, the quote says that those who do not attend to uh who do not make time for leisure will sooner or later make time for illness. Uh, mm. Something along those lines. And I feel like you do need a certain amount of leisure. That being said, can your leisure get out of control? <laughs> yes, it can. You know, we, uh, we spend, we are lucky. We live in an economy where we can dedicate a good amount of time to leisure, probably an unprecedented time to oh, leisure yeah. and still be able to fix our household. That being said, leisure is addictive just like anything else. You can be, you can get too much of it and your brain can say, hey, I can't cope with normal life. I'm used to having a very nice shelter life. I'm used to everybody, uh, you know, my life being easy all the time. And it's kind of a bad wake up call. You know, I think the one of the reasons we have these huge dropout rates in college is because these kids are used to playing video games and just doing minimal amounts of schoolwork. You finally get time where it's all on you. It's your own discipline to carry you through, and you haven't had to learn any of that discipline. Whereas right. before, somebody would force you to do it. This is kind of your own thing. Now, the reason we talk about fasting is because that's one of the ways that you regain control. Now, you can talk about video games or whatever you want, Dale, but like, what, what's the process of fasting, and how does it help? Well, uh, I, will, I will unveil the... Uh, the the religious mask here, but uh, I am an Eastern Orthodox Christian by persuasion, and we just got out of uh, a, a series of time called Lent, and so basically during that time, the ideal is that you're supposed to give up meat, dairy, um, meat, dairy, and eggs, and basically live as a vegan for 40 days, 50 days until until Easter. And so the the point is handed down by the point of that exercise is handed down by the uh, the Christian fathers is to help us basically gain control of the passions and and draw nearer to God. If if you believe in that sort of thing, I'm not necessarily evangelizing right now, mm -hmm. but uh, that's the that's the point of giving up uh, meat during that particular time. And usually, what will end up some of the uh, either Roman Catholics or even some Protestants will practice this by throwing other things on top of that, such as video games or chocolate or, you know, name, name said vice or thing that you get carried away with. Um, I think I may have mentioned this already with the, with the, with the ungaming that I'm going under is I realized that I was wasting a tremendous amount of time just sitting here, uh, you know, either going across a map or uh, fighting other criminals in GTA or, building simulated cities i'm starting to have starting to have the the dts from from a lack of video games no not really but 
so I, I undertook the endeavor to, and I haven't, like I said, I haven't replaced anything except maybe I have by making sure I get to the gym when I get off of work, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but I, I undertook the endeavor so I could regain better control of my time, parse it out for either more work or a different type of leisure that's more, uh, more productive, you might say. And I, you know, you don't have to give up video games. You can give up other things that either are vices or have become vices. I mean, glance over, but doesn't mean you can't do it now. Right. I, I think there's a strong, I guess for me, there's a correlation. Now you're okay with video gaming being something that you give up forever, in which case it's oh, fine. Yeah. I would actually be okay with getting giving it up forever too. For me, that's just my recreation. The quote I promised you is from John Wanamaker, and it's, uh, people who cannot find time for recreation are obliged to sooner or later to find time for illness. Right. Uh, and so for me, I think that that is an importance in keeping leisure and recreation to be part of your life. I, I don't urge people to quit that because some people do, and they become very scummy, awful people, or they try to, uh, Man, what I see among, uh, uh, when I worked in restaurants among my regional managers a lot, the thing is they would work themselves 100-hour work weeks, you know, no family. Uh, every When I was with uh, Tex Roadhouse, I got to meet the corporate board, and none of them were married. None of them had families. Uh, it was just, it was a prerequisite to even being there. They're just like, you're not, you're not going to have that time. And the thing is, is all of them kind of had were keeping it in and would they'd go crazy for a week basically they'd have a week off of work and they'd drink into blackness and you know would, wouldn't be able to handle it so really this is a matter of just gaining control of your leisure as opposed to just saying hey no more leisure ever again you know if you need that lesson we gave you that last episode when we talked about earning it <laughs> this right. time we're kind of talking about i think fasting for me is great because it's not saying um, when you fast from food it's not that food is bad you just need to control yourself and say hey that feeling that i have that says hey it's time to eat i'm greater than that feeling that right. feeling that I have on the inside that says you need to play video games, you're stronger than that feeling. You know, whatever it is, that thing that says, I think, and everybody gets that clock with their leisure time to be like, man, I really, at first it starts as just an anticipation, which is normal. I want to get home. You know, when you salivate before a steak, you're like, I'm just excited to eat some steak. You know, I, right. I think your body goes through into normal, a normal process of being like, all right, it's almost fun time. But to say, hey, time out real quick. I actually have extra work today. I'm sorry, natural inclinations of my body. You can have power over those natural processes, that willpower. And that, uh, I think, is assisted through fasting. Would you say that all that's accurate? I would say that's all very accurate. And the, you know, the, the, biggest, the, biggest, the biggest point, point of this, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest element is getting control of your time because you can't get time back. You can always go, if you have a slow week at work, you can always make, you go make up more money. You can always pick up a second job. You can, you know, sell something. You could start a side project, that sort of thing. You can't get it back. The The biggest thing for me was getting control of my time. And the thing that you, you mentioned those corporate executives um, mm -hmm. working all those hours. I mean, typically when you get past a certain tier in the corporate world, um, there's no, you don't make any more money. You, cause I, from what I understand, restaurant managers and up are all salaried. I mean, is that true across the board? In oh yeah. All of them were salaried. These hundred hour work weeks were just expectations. They were not trying to eke hours out. Right. And so the thing of it is you, you lose, you, you reach the point of diminishing returns very quickly. I could understand like, you know, an assistant manager or a, uh, or a waiter or a wait staff. We, we were just talking about this before the show, picking up extra shifts, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, as long as you're under that 40 hour cap or whatever, but yeah. you know, there's a, there's a point of diminishing returns because yeah, you might be making, you know, 70,000 a year as a, as a, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> as a, as a restaurant manager, I don't know what, even what the, I'm just throwing numbers around, but you already have hit that point of diminishing returns once you exceed 50 hours. And not only that, you're exceeding the diminishing returns for the corporation. Cause eventually, you know, people turn over, they burn out, mm -hmm. they, you know, oh, this yeah. and that. And that right. sort of thing. So I'm not necessarily advocating that you go the other way and, and pull down three jobs. Now, if that's what you have to do, by all means, do it. That that goes with utilizing, you know, violence of action and, and decisive uh, and decisive violence of action and, and decisive. Um, I don't want to use the same act, word action again, but mm -hmm. uh, being decisive to solve a problem that goes. That's just par for the course. But as far as uh, no, you don't want to. 
mix out your recreation. I mean, because that will make you sick. The, I mean, if anything, find something else to something else to do recreationally. One of the things that I did was uh, I made a wood burning for my mom for um, for Mother's Day, and I wish I had it. I wish I had it here with me, but uh, I, I'll post it up later, maybe if I can find a picture of it. But you know, dedicating yourself to some sort of hobby or side craft to fill that time or just read the newspaper. It, the Sunday, what I did was um, I took three newspapers. From, I paid for three newspapers from across the street, laid in that chair over there and just read the paper. And it was glorious. It was better than it. Seriously, it was a better experience than sitting down and playing the video games because it's like I'm just relaxing. But yeah, I mean, you don't want to go the other way. But at the same time, if you have to do it. Sure. Well, and this is when we talk about your re- your recreational activities can end up being another job. Uh, I think, especially in video games, the the key with these ga- with the games nowadays, the real model is to say, "Hey, log in every three hours for a reward. Log in every eight hours. Log in at least every day. You know, hey, make sure to visit it weekly." Um, when I and I've removed all my phone games uh, back when I was playing my phone games. That was a huge thing for me is I was be like, well, this is how I stay on top. And I was always good about being on top because I had it all scheduled out. But I had to I had to take back things from my family life. And this isn't like, yeah, I didn't have to like cancel a vacation because of it. But this is like everybody has to pay attention at the dinner table and we're in the middle of a conversation. I'll be like, hey, I got to go just just like a couple minutes. You know what I mean? But it's those minutes add up. And ultimately, the minutes I was getting from that video game were not more valuable than the minutes that I would have got at the dinner table with my family. You Absolutely. Know, those were more valuable to me. So what ended up being a, what was a recreational activity ended up owning me. You know, if when you see somebody go through an intervention, it's not like they're not like, oh, I just love drugs so much. They're like, man, I want to get clean. I just really am scared to go through all this stuff that is involved with getting off of drugs. Right. You know, I don't want to experience that pain. I don't want to go through that. It's very dark. It's very painful. I don't want to have to address those emotional problems. And so it's a burden. And so really this thing that, I mean, everybody turns the drugs at first to relieve you of your burdens, but pretty much everybody knows that they become a burden eventually, right? And and it's difficult. And so this is just one of those, I need to, I, one of the things that I always need to balance out to talk about literal fasting is with food. For me, I love to cook. Uh, you and I talk and you're like, uh, you know, I, I'm usually making dinner. Sometimes I pick it up, but I'm right. usually making some kind of dinner and making lunch. And I, I look for me, that is, that is a huge release. That's a huge entertainment for me. And it was a, it was very much a relief when I was going through some darker times. That was really what I turned to was, was cooking and, uh, making recipes to help myself get better. And so it was a good thing. But I had to, you have to balance it. It's not that you need to never do it again. You just need to balance it. And it would be very easy for me to have gotten off track and say, I'm going to make a lot of this. I'm going to cook eight meals today. I'm going to make myself very porky cooking, you know, as opposed to making my cooking very effective, but also right. keeping it brief enough to leave, leave room for other things in my life. Well, one of the things you mentioned about cooking, that's a good out. That actually is a good outlet because it's a moving meditation, especially if you know the recipe, you can kind of just, you're free to, you know, where you're doing your knife work or you, you throw the meat on the, on the front, on the frying pan or whatever, it, whatever instrument you're using. Um, yeah, that there's, there's huge benefits to that. It's actually better for you, even if you're making some nonsense food like rice or something like that. But, you know, that's marginally better for you than what you'd get at the, at the McDonald's. And on top of that, you know, if you've got family or friends around you, you get to present them with a gift when it's all done, which, you know, you, you work some love into that food and that sort of thing. I mean, with me for the, the newspaper, which is one of the things that I ended up doing was just, it's been so long since I've handled a newspaper and it was great. And, and sometimes, you know, that if you're, you're taking a nap under a newspaper, those things smell great. They're wonderful. I'm being completely serious. It <laughs> sure, sounds like sure. I'm being silly, but you know, it's, <laughs> Oh, this is nice. I got this this piece of paper over me that smell the ink. Yeah, that sort. Of thing. But you know, it, it's it's not even a matter of picking your poison. It's it's a matter of of what is it that you're after when you're when you're using your recreation. I mean, the, one of the I would always butt heads with uh, my adopted dad over video games because like you're not even 
you know, you're producing anything. Even in recreation, you can produce something. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But, you know, I, getting a little older now, I realized, okay, well, instead of putting my energy into the, you know, into, into clicking this mouse and, ooh, you know, the, the, the orcs are going to get me and that sort of thing. <laughs> You know, there's there is a way to make your recreation productive, and I'm not judging necessarily anyone who's doing video games, unless you want me to judge you, which you know I'd, I'd be happy to oblige. Um, but no, I mean it's just a matter of what you replace it with, what you're filling your time with, and what you're you're filling your your mind with. One might say, right? And there's there's that I think that that's exactly it. If you do give up something, you're going to fill that time with something else whether it's eating or video gaming or going to the bar or, you know, what, whatever, or shopping or whatever it is. If you just say, I need to stop spending as much money. I need to take a fast from my credit card or something like that to just say, you're going, you're still going to have time. You're going to have to fill, fulfill it with something else. We're not saying, I guess I'm just going to sleep for an extra 10 hours. You know what I mean? Every day because I can't, you know, I get, I guess I can't do all these things that I want. You know, you're going to fill that up with something. Now it, uh, and and again, I'm, I want to stress that this is not just a push to work. I'm not just saying you need to work harder. Dale right. and I talked about working hard last episode. That's that episode. This is something else. I'm not necessarily saying that you need to do something productive for society, but do something productive for yourself. To say we are, you know, this is my self building time. The quote I brought up earlier, you have to make that time for recreation. But let's diversify your recreation a little bit. You're going to meet new classes of people. You're going to meet new uh, j just people that can benefit your life. And, you, and if it, even if it's not social, you're going to create something, create something that you're not used to. You're going to challenge yourself. I find that even my mom loves art projects and I'm very bad at art. Um Writing creatively is about all that I do well, and I guess I'm a bit creative in the kitchen. That counts a little. But my mom is just, make a sculpture. She sees somebody's garbage and just thinks about how she can turn it into something magnificent. And and she's amazing. Uh, my, my mom is so brilliant when it comes to art, and I wish I got even a little bit of it. I'm bad at stick figures. You know, I'll, I'll play Pictionary with her and she's just beautifully drawing this like hair. And I'm just like stick figure with the two little tadpoles coming off the sides, you know, is my, that that's me drawing a, a girl stick figure, you know? And, and so it's just, I, I think, but the thing is, is when I get that extra time to try to well, do something Cody, else. I, I was say, you could, you could draw her as a vase. That's true. <laughs> draw a vase and then you know draw the legs i mean you could improve it a little bit uh you know what well maybe we'll have to try it out i think of the the, the vase i think of the hands on the hips you know she yeah. might be a little too angry there but you, go. you know when you learn when you do draw, when you do draw these other techniques you know when you try these other techniques you learn something and you learn that that something about yourself or what other people have to go through. So, for example, when I was hanging out with my mom in Arizona, we did some, we we played with some clay, and she succeeded in making a lot of things, and I failed at making a few things. But I gained a lot of appreciation for what she was doing, and it was really cool. And so now, when somebody's working with clay, and they're like, "Oh, I was in, you know, I'm in this step, and I just can't get it to," it. I'm like, "Dude, I feel you." You know, whenever somebody tries to make like anything thinner than a, a piece of spaghetti with clay. I'm just like, Oh brother. Like, you know, it, it creates an understanding and it's really helped me get out there. So yes, I didn't really do it because I was good at it and I didn't really do it for myself. I just did it. You know, first I did it to be closer to my mom, but I was taking a break from what I normally do from my normal recreational activities. And it just gave me an appreciation for what she goes through for her, for her area of expertise, I guess her, her, uh, her sweet spot on the bat. Right. Okay, never mind. I'm not even I'm sorry. I was trying to I was trying to interact while you were talking and uh, it kept talking and it wouldn't turn down for me. Sorry about that. <laughs> you okay? No, um, what I was gonna say is one of the things, even if you choose the path of boredom like I did this week, boredom people think, Oh, you're wasting time if you're bored. Well, actually no, even with boredom, you're creating a space. I mean, you're you're over over the, the time period that you're just not engaged with anything or you're just you know, laying around. I mean, yeah, you can take a nap. That's regenerative, which I actually did do that after I got done with the paper. But, um, you know, there's, there's naps, there's, it lets your mind. It, and I, there's all these sciencey stuff 
but that, that goes into basically when you when you allow yourself to be bored it, it creates it does something in your brain where you're able to solve problems more creatively and i wish i was more technical on that side of the house but um that's that's one of the things you can create um you know again better control of your time even just extra time planning that gets into the work side of things but you know that's that's about all i've got in in terms of that to sum it up i mean you can create you can create a space for more creativity. You can replace it with, you know, fitness or arts and crafts activities or, you know, cooking or any number of things. I mean, just look up an exhaustive list of hobbies on Google and bam, there you go. Let me ask you this, Dale. Is it possible for you to get bored? Yes. Yeah? You're boring me right now. You're not boring me right now. <laughs> That question was so boring. <laughs> this whole podcast is boring. Of course. No, it's not. <laughs> I it's not for me, it's not possible for me to get bored. Mm -hmm. I could be locked up in a room for the rest of my life and I'm just never going to get bored. My mind is just constantly racing, constantly on. Um I know that and, and now I'm gonna go ahead and insult your intelligence. The reason I even brought this up. <laughs> is because they tied uh into they, they tied uh intelligence to uh the lack of ability to get boredom to get bored right to experience boredom that's what i should say and i think that it's because now you might not get bored because you find something to do or you allow yourself to maybe you and i have a different definition of what boredom is but essentially when somebody's like eh, i'm bored there's nothing to do well there's tons of stuff to do <laughs> Right? Oh yeah. Like it I for me I think an intelligent person it really is impossible. It's something that like is very childish, you know, mm -hmm. very very uh juvenile to say I'm bored. Because really you, if you're bored you just don't understand everything that you have the possibility of doing in this life. If you maybe we were Neanderthals and we were just and we were either hunting or not hunting and we'd gotten a fresh kill, maybe you could be bored for like a couple of minutes. But even then, you got to think about where you're going to sleep next. And I mean, even without all this higher level intellectual thought, it would just be so hard to be bored. And I find that I find that people who listen to this just couldn't be bored. So even if you fast from something, you say, man, I'll be bored. I really don't think you will be, especially if you're listening to this show. I really don't think you're going to be bored. I think right. that that's a stupid person problem. And I think if you've appreciated this show, you're not a stupid person. Do you have a do you have a filter so I could uh, throw up the bird sign at you for insulting my yeah. intelligence? Because I didn't know what you were what you were going for there. I want to push back on that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Cl <laughs> uh, closing arguments, dum dum. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, I don't I don't mean boredom in the juvenile sense of ah, I'm bored. No, I mean like just even if it's it's like somewhere between being conscious and and meditating, where you're you know, you kind of just space out and stare at the wall i mean you're you're basically it's it's a form of conscious rest it's not meditating but that's the that's the type of when and i'm trying to remember i wish i would have you know maybe next time we'll circle back around to it but there were a, a couple of um a couple of podcasts i listened to where it talks about the art of being bored and it's it's basically just letting either letting it's kind of like you could say it's like letting the engine idle or you know where it is it's still in a state of readiness when you hit the gas yep, that makes sense but you know you're you're just you're just creating that space um that's it's it's hard to be precise with it because yeah when you you're right when you say when i've said allow yourself to be bored you're you immediately went to the the 12 year old that, you know <laughs> i'm bored which usually means they're hungry they they want to interact or they're neglecting their chores or they could <laughs> find something to do so there you go. That's my that's my final thought. Closing argument. Closing thoughts. Final thoughts. Final argument. Yeah, uh, all of that. I, I think you, you you got all that in there. Uh, man, I'm not even sure if I have really any closing thoughts. I think fasting's great. I don't think you necessarily have to do it with food, but I would say consider it uh, if your leisure activities are maybe dominating your life a little bit too much. I mm -hmm. think we all sometimes live in a denial about what is really holding us no. back. No, I don't live in denial. <laughs> Except not not Dale, of course. <laughs> he He's perfectly aware of everything. Uh, he's I in wish. denial of being a self-help guru. That's what Dale is. Uh, 
we all are, you know, we don't like to bring it up. It's not natural. I am a strong, now this is something my church teaches. I won't impress this upon everybody, but that the natural man is an enemy of God. Now, that aside, let's at, at, at the very least just take that to mean let's second guess the natural man a little bit. If your nature says, hey, you know, it's okay, play video games all the time, take another hit, you know, d d it'll be fine. It's time to push back on that just a little bit. If there's anything in your brain that's saying, hey, this is the way that you need to act, you should question that, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that everything, that it's right or wrong, but at least question it. At the very least, put it to the test to say, hey, look, you know, m my nature is telling me to do this, but I really want to think outside the box right now. I want to do something else. I really want to consider what I what else I could be doing with my time. And so I'm going to put it on break. I'm going to put you on timeout real quick just to get you under control. We talk about regaining control is kind of the purpose of fasting. To say that, hey, look, I'm playing 80 hours of video games a week. I need to take a break. And then when I come back, it'll be a treat to play five hours of video games a week. And that's really that balance that you're looking for. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, let's close it up here. Again, we're libertarians.com, Patreon. We love you guys. If you're subscribing on Patreon, thank you so much. If not, patreon.com slash we are libertarians. Uh, subscribe to the Wall Reader, wallreader.com. Uh, great first issue on that. Dale and I are both published in that one there. Uh, Dale talks about uh, orthodoxy, and I talk about uh, the Tea Party, and that's fun. And, uh, of course, simplisticadvice.com as well. That's where you can find even more of Dale's advice in case you just aren't getting enough here. In <laughs> case we're libertarians, Dale isn't enough and you demand more. Uh, a lot well, of you guys hitting up my messaging box and ask, uh, 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 want to know where Dale gets a lot of his, his, his sources. My source is Dale. I went through some psychology and some counseling a while ago, but Dale is my source. So if you are, if you're looking for sources, that's what it is for me. So if you'd like to ask Dale, that's a good place to find him. We're doomed, right? We're do we're doomed if you're my, if I'm your source, man. We're, we might be in some trouble. But yeah. Simplisticadvice.com. Until then, Dale. Excellent oh, day you. to you. You too, man. <laughs>